Hi, we're going to keep talking about plotting with MATLAB. And we've seen the normal plot command, and we can plot, um, we pick our x and our y values. And if you don't specify um, the increment, it'll choose 1 as your increment. And sometimes that's what you want, sometimes it isn't. Um, so I'm going to say y is just going to be x squared. So our, a normal plot of this would just look like plot x and y. And then we can see what x and y look like. And both the x and the y axis are linear. And uh, we could change that um, the way the axis is going to be represented uh, with semi-log x, another way to plot where the y axis is linear, but our x axis is a logarithmic scale. Um, so we've got 10 to the 0, which is 1, 10 to the 1, which is 10, 10 to the 2, which is 100. So potentially, if we had a lot of data that we needed to display, uh, a large range on the x-axis, this would be a good choice for us. Another option for plotting is semi-log y. And we see the y-axis has a logarith logarithmic scale and a linear scale on the um, x-axis. We could also, if we have lots of data we want to display, we could use log log and display both the x and the y-axis are logarithmic scales in this case. Um, another good command to know with plotting is hold on and hold off. So I'm going to go back to a, a normal, not, not normal, a linear scale instead of log, logarithmic. So if I wanted to plot x versus y, if I have another uh, y that I want to plot, so let's say y2 is going to be 2 times x. So if I were to use the plot command again, it's going to override my figure and plot the new x versus y. What if I want both of those displayed at the same time? There's a command hold on, which will kind of pause the current figure you have going here. And the next time you call a plot command, now you've got both of those being plotted. And I could even have a third one, y3, let's say it's um, 2 times x squared. And plotting x and y3. And now I've got three different lines. If I get tired of having all these lines plotting on the same plot, I can just do hold off. And then the next time I try to plot something, it'll wipe the, the slate clean and, and plot um, just one line. And here I've just got one figure open. Notice that the name in the upper left corner is figure one. If I want more than one graph going, there's a figure command. And if I say figure two, it will open a second figure with the name figure two. And whatever I plot from this point on will show up on figure two. And if I do something like put in a title, it knows I'm referencing figure two. If I want to go back and reference my first figure, I just use the figure command figure one, and then I could give figure one a title, and I haven't changed the title of figure two. So anytime you use figure command which with a number for a figure that already exists, it'll just um, reference that, and all your future commands will refer to that um, figure. So I could go back to figure two and say something like grid on, it'll put the grid on, and anytime you use figure with a number for a figure that doesn't exist, it'll create a new figure. So pretty cool. One more thing I want to show you about plotting is creating subplots. Now if I want to create a subplot, I can specify the number of rows, the number of columns, and the position of the graph that I want to, or subplot that I want to add. So here I said I wanted three different rows of graphs and two columns and I want to start working in position number one for my subplot. So whenever I do a plot command, it's going to plot in that first position. Then I could say, well, go to the second subplot position, and let's plot another value, a set of values, x and y values. And then I could say, well, go to the third position. And when you say position one, two, three, it works from top to bottom and left to right. So one and two and three and four will be over here. And so let's plot another one. And I think you get the idea.